Hey, welcome to a special, really special edition of World Beyond Belief. My name is Paul Marco, and a couple days ago, I was gotten in touch with by a uh, a woman named Karen Rodriguez, and she knows a lot about uh, realities and alternative realities and how AI is creating alternative realities, and a couple. Um, programs that I had heard before, one program out of DARPA, and then the ever-present, what's getting more and more popular, the OWL program that, you know, everybody that's waking up equates with Moloch. But, and how is that used to create our reality? Uh, she talked to me for about an hour, and I was totally spellbound. I'm not sure I understood a lot of it, but what she was explaining fit perfectly with my realization and my observation of what's going on now, especially with targeted individuals, especially with things and how, they're, how they seem to be mysteriously working out now in the world. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let Karen introduce herself and talk a little bit about her experience. And then I'm just going to let her uh, take you on this amazing uh, I can call it a merry-go-round or a Ferris wheel uh, of all this different information. Uh, and you'll be surprised that all this information is documented. She has a website where, she, where this is, where this is doc, most of this documentation is on her website, and we'll have that listed below if you want to check that out. So without any further delay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to treat you to uh, this evening's very special treat. Uh, Karen Rodriguez. Karen, how are you? Hi, I'm good. Good. So, my name is Karen. I is, live in the Silicon Valley. I have lived here since 2005. I have two associate's degrees. One is in computer information systems and one is in accounting. Really, I'm an accountant. I mean, that's what I do. But my hobby is uh, white hat hacking. And I started doing that in 2015 and I found a Nationwide man in the middle attack, and I won't go into much about it, but I went to the FBI about it, and I became a targeted individual when I did that, and it has been a hell of a ride. Um, I worked at Lockheed Martin as a subcontractor, then I worked for RFI Security as an operations manager, so I kind of worked my way up the career ladder, and I saw in the security industry how psychopathic everybody was, and I was being groomed, I believe, to be a honeypot for Lockheed Martin. And I did not sleep with my boss and I got let go. And after that I started hack, white hat hacking. And it was just by chance because my boyfriend and I um, both, you know, I mean he's a he's a tech guy. I mean he's been in tech for twenty years and we saw some corruption going on with credit cards in a different tech field other than security or Lockheed Martin area and we reported that to the FBI and that was another reason why we were also targeted. So after going through some painful uh, growing spurts with the targeting and understanding what the program was truly about, um, I started doing research and I researched and I researched and um, you know I started looking into who could do something like this, you know? And I, and I started seeing the intelligence agencies, and I knew about Edward Snowden, and whatever Snowden, and I think Bill Benny as well, um, couldn't probably really say because their information is either siloed and, and so classified that they didn't even know about the, the sentient old simulation, or what exactly, but if they do know about it, they can't talk about it because they are so classified. But that's what's really going on in our world. We are having what DARPA created through computer language for, meant for AI to do data mining to give to the UN, I believe, in a form of eugenics. This is the eugenics program coming home to roost. It is the rise of the fourth right, okay? And I'm going to show you right now how DARPA, and I'm going to walk you through the steps, how DARPA created all of this with Tim Berners-Lee the creator of the internet that worked with CERN, yet again CERN, right? We've come up with CERN. So um, 
What I'm going to show you first, I'm going to give you some background information on the Sentinel World Simulation. And right here, which you can find online at Purdue University, Purdue University actually did this document in 2006, uh, August 20, uh, August 22nd, right? So this was done by um, the Experiment Engineering Lead out of JFCOM, which is a uh, DARPA basically funded side project, whatever the hell they do, right? So, sorry, <laughs> whatever they do. What? So, uh, what it was is a concept paper, right? So, basically, the world simulation, which is what I would like, what I believe targeted individuals are really seeing is, is the world simulation, and they are being data mined as test subjects for artificial intelligence to see if the augmented reality of the world simulation is effective. Okay. Makes that's sense. Cool. That makes sense. That makes sense. So the sentient world simulation, I'm just going to give you the brief definition from that document I just showed you. It says, building a synthetic mirror of the world to automate continuous calibration with all, with respect to all current real-time events. So that means they're running a mirror simulation of the world. So you and I are talking right now, somewhere, somewhere, in some lab, maybe in Utah, where they have all that data center shit, maybe there, I don't know, but maybe that's where they're running the simulation. If they can physically see us, and what people don't understand is that the augmented part of like the Pokemon thing, where the Pokemon thing was right there, imagine that being a soldier in the same house with you. You can't see him, but he can move your keys, you know? So that's what I think they're doing with virtual headsets. I mean, that's how technically advanced this is. I don't know what happened to our regular world, but with all the pine tree look, I live in California and I love red looks, okay? They're everywhere out here. And they are missing. They are slowly decaying to nothing. Right, right. And they want to say it's the bark beetle, it's the drought. Yeah, no, yeah. it's the What What is the, uh, uh, Karen, what's the name of the, uh, what's the name of the uh, document that you held up? The document is a sentient world simulation, a continuous, you know, a continuous running model of the real world, a concept paper for comments, government point of contact, says Tony Perry, and then it gets his email, JFCOM J9, experimentation leading, or engineering lead, and then the technical point of contact at Purdue is Dr. Alco, I'm going to murder his name, but... Chad Rubin, I don't know. Right. Purdue, Purdue is obviously in the end, right? So this was their concept paper in 2006. Okay. Okay. So if they wanted to, they could probably get, they could probably get in touch with those individuals. I mean, if somebody right. wanted to run this down, yeah. Right. And I know, and I just don't understand why no good reporter's done this yet. Oh, they don't, <laughs> they don't cover stuff like this. No, we've learned working with targeted individuals, they don't, they cover the puppet, they cover what's Trump's doing, oh, what's Trump's son doing, oh, what's, they cover the puppet show, they don't cover the reality. So go ahead. But, yeah. Real, real journalism right here, you yeah. know, yeah. No, they won't go near it. All right, we'll continue. You got us into uh, alternate realities created through uh, data mining of our reality. So the reason that they were able to create such a mirror image of our reality all has to do basically with the data mining that DARPA created with a language originally called DAML. D-A-M-L. DAML is DARPA agent markup language, right? So basically what that means is it kind of searches for stuff and basically what I'm gathering. And I may be a little off on that, but DARPA made it, so obviously it's gonna be something military, right? right. So the other Something portion, dark. Something yeah. dark. Yeah. Yeah, right. So the other portion of the language name is oil. O I L. And this is the original name that turned into owl from two thousand one to two thousand four, I believe. And so they, what Darby did is they gave a bunch of money to universities to come up with this kind of language because they knew they were going to be data mined for AI. Nobody else did at the time. It was probably the 90s, you know? 
Right. You know, that he knew exactly what he was doing. So the, uh, they came up with the damel and the oil, and the oil was the oncology part that turned into owl, right? So oncology inference layer is the name of that portion of the language, and that's the portion that's going to classify. That's the portion that's going to be the data mine. The other one's probably what it's doing is pulling from HTML and XML and JSON and all these other languages that you actually, when you physically view your internet stream, you see the HTML or the XML or the JSON, the JavaScript, that, right? So that's what you're seeing. But what the AI is doing is it's data mining the page and the language it's already in. So if it's in HTML, it's able to just run over it and go, okay, I'm going to find out who wrote this page by scanning it, and I'm going to find out what their website is, who, who they're related to, and they even have one called friend of a friend where they've taken the owl language and built another language out where they go and do like degrees of separation from your web page of who else is attached to you, who are your friends on Twitter, that kind of stuff. Okay, okay. yeah, that's important. Yeah. So they're able to do this, for, and this was all built for artificial intelligence in a certain field of all artificial intelligence. And that field is known as knowledge, the knowledge and representation. Hang on, I want to give you the exact. The field of, of AI, it's the field of artificial intelligence dedicated to representing information about real world events and the form of in a form that a computer solves problems or tasks. And it's called knowledge, representation, and reasoning field of artificial intelligence, KR. My initials, how about the internet? Yeah, how nice. So, <laughs> so anyways, what, what the owl does is it uses what's called formal semantics, right? So I'm going to I'm just going to tell you that semantic web and formal semantics kind of have something to do with that, okay? And a lot of people don't even know about the semantic web. And the semantic web is the actual web that we don't see because we're siloed here. Because the AI is controlling what your internet router sees, and I'm going to explain that in one second, okay? Okay? So, Formal semantics are if and then statements, and I can get into it. As you, you can think about Excel, right? So formal semantics, that kind of thing. Um, and it's just a, a way that they classify stuff, right? So Apple is the, the the base framework for Owl, and this is all based in art. This is all artificial intelligence computer language that people don't understand. Only the people in the field get it. Right? Like some people know about HTML and writing in the JavaScript. I mean, that's, that's old news. That's old hack. The anthropology stuff and the stuff that I'm going to speak about now is all new kind of derived for artificial intelligence to do data mining, you know? And I, I build databases, you know, as an accountant because I do a lot of software migration and stuff like that, and I'm pretty good with uh, Excel. So. I can understand the data mining and, and the language, and I, and I think that's what helps me understand it because I can do all kinds of stuff on Excel. I can do pivot tables, whatever, right? Because I've done so much as an accountant. So it's kind of funny because it was an easy bridge for me from an accounting standpoint because you, in accounting, you use a lot of SQL. Well, this is just the same words in a different form for a different reason. So it was, it was in a far job. So anyways, um, let me go tell you a little bit about how they're controlling the router. So OWL, the ontology language, uses what's called formal or uh, resource description framework. The resource description framework that OWL uses, it is the way it's able to classify stuff, right? Is uh, because it uses a subject, predicate, and object. So the subject is the resource identity. So let's say it's you, Paul, right? And it's going to say predicate would be denotes a trait or an aspect. So it's going to say, we want to see if Paul has glasses on right now, right? So the object would be the value. Do you have glasses on or off? So it would be on or off, right? So we're looking at you, the subject, the predicate is your glasses, whether they're on or off is the object. 
Gotcha. So they're kind of complicated if you don't you know, understand that portion, but it's the basics. And this is able to analyze metadata. This is the framework that they're able to analyze. This is what the United States uses to analyze metadata. It's the RDF framework. And the ontology, because of what it does. So the ontology uses noun and verbs, which is classes of objects, the nouns, and verbs represent relations, like friend of, husband, whatever, right? And then you go into the RDF framework, which is a step below that, and it's, and it's classifying the subject, predicate, and object, okay? And that's on the web page. So any any word that you want to classify as a subject, we'll go search any web page. And it can search multiple things. It doesn't have to search just one, so. But it's used for metadata. I don't want people to get that through their head. Metadata. Triplicate. This is known as a triplicate. Subject, predicate, object. Triplicate. Got it? Right. Now here comes the part where I bring you into AI monitoring your internet router. Okay? The internet router has three parts to it. It has a head, a body, and a tail. Triple tail. Okay? So, here's the deal with your router. Your router has several layers. It has a um, network layer, data link layer, um, transport layer, you know, and then it goes up to application layer, which is the web page you see, okay? And I'm probably forgetting one or two, but whatever, just for this basis, you know? <laughs> yeah, example. we're so, going. We're with you. Physical layer, the, the network layer is, is your machine, right? So it's machine and wire touching, basically, right? So the data link layer is the pulse of the signal coming through fiber optics, okay. right? And this is something that people really need to think about. All over the world need to think about this. If you have a home, a, a house, in the United States especially, you should check this out. If you have a house in the United States, and you have, let's say, Dish Network, okay? Something not related to like a cable company or AT&T. You know, a lot of people just use their cell phone and have Dish Network. Why don't you see in the front yard, if you have more than just the electricity utility company power line coming to your house, and if you do, you need to find out who put installed that other line, the fiber optic cable that you did not want because you have Dish Network, and find out who installed it, why, and get it the hell off your property. Because that fiber optic is able to send the AI, and I'm going to show you again in a moment how you is able to actually attach and put a private network on your router. Okay, so this is what people don't understand. They're not seeing the real internet. It is artificial intelligence that's monitoring you and feeding you what it thinks you want to hear. Okay? Right. And Part so of project. Part of Project Blue uh, Bluebeam, I remember, uh, came uh, through the cables. They were going to uh, bring entities through the fiber optic cable into your home. It's part of Project Bluebeam. It's part of the. Right, and this is what they're doing. That's a simulation of yeah. So then now, what they've done now is they've been able with quantum computers to finish off actually getting the people inside your home, right? And I get this, I hear airplanes sometimes and then I can feel the presence. Like I hear airplanes from my home. I don't know why. I have a really weird crap happen to me all the time. Yesterday I went, I, my boyfriend and I went hiking and I go, look at that. And I can see that squirrel right there? That squirrel is either not real or he's being mind controlled Right. to eat the dirt. He's eating the dirt, Jared. Do you ever see squirrels eat the dirt? And when I said that, I don't think he heard it, and then they got louder and he heard it. And he was like, yeah, I can hear that. And you see, this is not real reality. So for some reason, I'm able to pick up on this. I don't know why. Yeah, how many times have I heard uh, T.I. say, yeah, they're overflying me right now. Or they, they right. this is the third uh, helicopter today I've seen. Yeah, it's... So I, I don't know if like if we're the only ones left that aren't left in the simulation and they're trying to put us in there, and so everybody else is a hologram. I, I don't know. Maybe we're the we're targeted because we're the actually God's chosen ones left. I mean I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's our IQ is too high to get in the simulation, or maybe we won't just fit because we won't listen to the AI. We'll tell it I'm off or whatever. You know? Right. Yeah. We 
Well, you guys would be the challenge for the AI. You, you guys yeah. would be the most challenging because you're not generally sheeple. And you, no. now you've been thrown into a hyper fast, uh, hyper deep rabbit hole to mm -hmm. figure out what's going on. And that's the beauty to the, you know, I realized that the TI program is incredibly horrible. It's, it's like torturing a million people all over the world. So I can't even imagine how horrible it is. But on the other hand, uh, we have a whole, we have a million people now scrambling to find truth, like you. Mm -hmm. And going through mm -hmm. this owl software. So, so once they gather this information and they were connected up by uh, fiber optic cables to wherever they're connecting us, to this, this other reality, I suppose. Well, you know, something else that most people don't even realize is in the 90s, um, you know, they had a bunch of uh, fiber optic cable that they just left hanging in underneath the ground. It's like it was called dark fiber. Well, Google lit it all up among other companies like Zao and some other companies too. Um, and these companies lit up that dark fiber for a reason. It was laid there a long time ago for a reason. You know what I mean? So this was planned. This is no, this is no new phenomenon. This has been going on for years. How long? This is what the ushered in. This is what 9 11 ushered in. This is why when you look at that video of George Bush when they tell him about 9 11, he looks like, oh, good. Or whatever the hell that face when he gave him. Right? Yeah. Yeah, seriously. And whatever kind of a creature he, whatever kind of an entity he is, right? Uh, yeah. So, so uh, this, these K, the dark cable was in place before nine one one. I think so, right? Before nine eleven, right, hun? Dark fiber was already installed. Yeah. And it was installed throughout the Western world. I mean, how do you think? How extensive do you think it is? I would assume so. I would think so because what the see so this is the thing about the dark fiber, and I'm gonna so I'm gonna pull you back into how AI is monitoring you, okay? Okay. So what the fiber optic does is it actually the light pulse, right? So EMF. And okay. the data link layer, the second layer of network access, right? Well that's where your computer sends the packet of the light pulse, electrical pulse, depending on what you're using. Cat five, coax. You know, I work for electricians, so I had ten years of, of all kinds of information from that. You know, and right. as a what's in project management, as an assistant project management for electricians. So I have some other information that most people wouldn't even think of, right? So, right. Anyways, um, with the data leak layer, the fiber optics, whatever they're using, is that pulse. So the pulse is the mod. What is modulating, right? The, the, the internet or the router is actually the modulator, changes the frequency, whatever, right? To a data packet. And that's what the bits are that send through, right? So that's how you get your bit, you know, your bandwidth, whatever, right? So when it's connecting to the internet, it's got the three parts, it's the RDF network. It's the same triple, right? Except instead of a, a subject, predicate, and object, this time you have a header, a, top, a body, and a tail. And the metadata is in the body, right? And so that's what the ontology computer languages do it, data mines that metadata, which would be a great way for, let's say, the fusion centers to have, you know, all this information just at their fingertips, right? Because now they have the web language, all of that they can just run. Basically another layer of web that does a different kind of search engine. And it gives you more information than you've ever get from Google. Wow. So, that's, yeah, that's the power of using semantics, which is beyond what ontology computer OWL uses. So OWL is, uh, yeah. And the internet that we know is like a silo in the middle of this vast dark web. I mean, what what is it in? Well, you see, the semantic web was created by... Um, the World Wide Web Consortium, right? The one that created the web, that would be the one that's kind of concerned. Tim Burnsley is his name, right? So he created Semantic Web, he created HTML. So they were already thinking about this in like 2001, 2002, about how they could layer the web to give intelligence agencies better access to, that, to all data, right? And to data mine, right. to form a data mine. 
So when when you start looking at owl though, excuse me, owl is used by neuro behavioral sciences. Okay, so remember we were talking about those so the the grades the the they're able with five G networks to do that slice the MRI slice I was mentioning that to you how they do that gradient. See, this is where Dr. Pat, Dr. Horton really needs to idea right here because this is where they're able to do the string theory. This is where they're able to modulate whatever frequency here to whatever they want it to be at so they can remote control your brain. That's what it is, is remote control the brain. And um, the reason why they're able to do this is because they have that in mind the Human Genome Project. They have neurobehavioral ontology. Oh, they make everything from what kind of drugs people use to whether they had depression, they have a PMS probably, you know? So there's that. And then they have animal and plant genome, right? So they have geopolitical, the United States nation does, and then they tell you how to have a semantic web. So these are all areas that they've been able to take artificial intelligence and data mine us. And these are the fields that they are, um, these are the, the fields they chose to data mine through genetics. This is the eugenics program. This is, that's why I keep saying it's the right and the fourth right, because it's the third right. Just three, instead of going after Jewish people like they did in Germany, now they're just going after everybody who doesn't. The AI decides it's a problem. So there you go. Wow. So, so, so when they, so when all these programs collect all this data, uh, and they've they've got access to your brain, they create this alternative alternative reality in your brain, or is it physically outside of you? Um, how does both. this... It's gotta be. It's gotta be both. It's gotta be both. Okay, so... I don't know why, I mean, why us, I mean, what makes us so special one way or the other, you know? Oh, we can yeah. speculate on that. Um, I, the, the TIs that I know are special, so... Uh, it's it's an interesting it's an interesting group to look at as a whole, um, and so so I I can catch the idea that we have these programs that are monitor every, everything, and the fiber optics has access to our homes, and so through the fiber optics, they can model uh, realities like ours, but are slightly different to give us something. That they want to give us, I mean. I, yes, I mean, and that's the part that I just don't understand. Is you know, okay, why go to all the trouble to make all these simulations for people? Because you know, there are people who think that we're dead already. You know, and I, I don't really buy that because I watched my daughter grow. And she's still growing. She's almost ten. She's ten in September. You know, so it's like I know it's. You know, I know that can't be exactly it, but I think it's. I don't know. When I saw all that corruption in 2015, I, I just didn't know where we were anymore. I started to think that maybe the world did end on 9/11, and we didn't know it. You know. Well, yeah. well, let let me uh, throw some ideas at you, and you can tell me how foolish these are. <laughs> Lately, um, uh, we've been equating uh, the screens of TVs and the screens of uh, computers and the screens of the little iPods as uh, scrying mirrors. Um, centuries ago, and actually uh, uh, the mirror mirror on the wall uh, that the evil queen called up in, uh, how was it, uh, Seven Dwarfs, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, was a scrying mirror. And she, and she was able to communicate with another dimension or another reality through going through this scrying mirror. Uh, you know, could have been connected by cables to, you know, you know who knows. Uh, this, is, this is back when um, they were putting that mind control thing in our brain, in this instance, through fairy tales. So now, if you have your TV set, your TV set is put together through small um, circuit diagrams. 
-hmm. And these circuit diagrams look exactly like sigils. And sigils can be used, if they're used in the proper order, in the proper way, to summon demons. Mm -hmm. so, so what I'm saying is, we know that technologically these, uh, these psychopaths are trying to torture us uh, modeled after a probably demonic torture of, of old. So this could be just another link. This could be just another way that they're creating these alternative um, scenarios and giving them to us a little bit at a time for us to incorporate with this other reality. I, I don't know, those are the things that went through my mind as you were describing how they were using string theory. You might want to go into that a little bit, uh, how that might yeah. be tied into this. So string theory, I think they're using it in two ways. I think they're using it first to mind control people, because that's how they're able to modulate the pulse of your, basically it's your proton of your brain as a quantum computer, right? So then now that they have an actual quantum computer, Anthony, you can't ask Pat, but I can't, I can't express to you how, how wonderful his job I think he did on the subject. He even called, there's a Boltzmann machine that's actually, that, that's mimicking, he's supposed to mimic the human brain, I believe is what it is. And so there's some, you know, things that can actually go down and travel with him and, and see, but what basically he said, we're, we're a quantum computer, they have quantum computers, with string theory, they modulate the frequency they match through your router, your phone, whatever, they can make it to your frequency, no problem, right? So then what they do is they send a pulse here and they pulse it in the quantum computer and they're able to entangle them, quantum, quantum entangle them, which is what the string theory does. And essentially, whatever's rotating on this side will rotate here at the exact same frequency, right? It just has to be at the right coordinates and all that jazz so that the quantum computer has learned to do by studying our brain and doing the MRIs and all that stuff, right? That they do remote. And so another way that they're doing the quantum entanglement is with our physical reality. So they're able to sit with their augmented reality in front of them, probably with their goggles on or whoever, whatever doing this, right? And they can physically tap into this world. And what they do when they tap in is they're here, but they're not here. You can't see them, but they're quantum entangled with us through, through string theory again to move stuff around in your room or your apartment or your house or whatever, and then just be like not there. But they move stuff in my car while I'm driving. They're in the damn car with me, you know? They control my car, actually. They made that perfectly clear to me today. Wow. Well, were you saying today that when well, we talked earlier that they uh, present uh, gang stalkers, that some of the gang stalkers might be not human beings the way we know them, but products right. of this so, OWL program? Right. So the, they can probably, and I, don't, I, I sort of wonder if it's artificial intelligence doing that to us, right? So I think it might be artificial intelligence they're able to manifest somebody that looks human or looks however they want it to look at the moment to you to mess with your mind. And that's the goal is to make target individuals crazy so they think they can keep screwing with your head and, and long enough you'll go insane and kill yourself. That's why it's so important for GI not to kill themselves because we must have power over this. Oh. And you know, my boyfriend gets very sick because he knows what's going on, he understands, and they give him voice this fall. They don't do that to me. They don't voice this me. I give him an earful if they even try one. Okay. <laughs> it's all right right now. But they do him and they mess with him and they mess with my daughter. Today my daughter said something about an autopsy and she doesn't even know what that word means. And she wow. said that to me. I want to see your autopsy. I mean, Prince's autopsy is what she said. How strange is that? Why? Good question, though. I'd like to see that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he was. I'm sure he was murdered for saying something about him travel. Yeah, something, or he's on the island with the rest of the misfit toys. Who knows? <laughs> so, uh, so, so they could use this owl to. Uh, 
gang stock, Target, um, millions of people throughout the world. Right, so they do the data mining of that, but you're thinking of sentient simulation, the world simulation, so that's where all the real gang stocking happens is in the world simulation. So you're seeing augmented reality. Like, I'm gonna show you right now. Let me share my screen if that's okay. I'm gonna show you a picture, a couple pictures, something. Yeah. Stuff, okay? Yeah. So, I don't want to take this, I just want to show my desktop. Okay, this is going to be kind of messy because I wasn't ready for this. And I don't know how I get to where I'm going. I'm Apple, I'm still learning it. <laughs> okay. Here we go, here we go. Okay, there we go. So let's look at OMG, where am I going to That's not them, that's not them. Sorry about that. I'm still learning this. I'm telling you, I, just, I got this yesterday just to talk to you because I was like, so like, oh my god, I have to tell you. <laughs> I figured it out. It was like, it was like Eureka, you know? Yeah. Shit. I need to go to my. We'll file. get it. We'll try to get the old guy off your screen and get something interesting up there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how to use my files. To be I'm serious. Apple. I'm, I'm like, I have iPad and iPhone. I've used them for a really long time. There it is. But now I'm like, apparently I can't do it. So this is what I'm going to show you gang stalking. See this right here? This yeah. Is the front of my assessment building. Can you see that? Can we that up here? Yes, that's the bees. That's the bees in front of your house. Yes. Yes. Right? So that's augmented reality. That's not really there. Or they are mind, those bees are literally mind controlled to be there otherwise. I can't quite figure that part out with string theory. If they're using just the brain string theory, or if. You know, I don't understand how they're able to do that part. It's quite clever. Like, you have no idea. But it's, it's still, it's like, it's not there. It's there, but it's not there. People, other people can see it, but it's not really there. Like, I'm sure that that's not really there. And I know that sounds insane to people, but it, they've got to understand that. It's, but the TIs have got to understand that, because I think once they understand that, everything becomes less effective. You know, and you have to empower yourself. Empowering yourself is so important. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I don't even know how to do that. So let me go back over here. Um, there, you're back. Good. Let me just close that. So I don't know exactly, you know, how the, the string theory is being used 100%. But I really feel that that's what CIs are really doing, is seeing that a lot of the time they're thinking, this is, you know, these people are done, they're, they're chasing me, whatever. No, they're not. They're not even really there. Only to you. They're all the grand. You know, you, a lot of people probably have a thing like I do. I see birds everywhere. I actually, I hear owls all the time. I have heard owls for a year and a half. Two years now, I think, maybe. I don't have any idea why I'm hearing them, except maybe... I was destined to find it, and I knew I was going to find out about it. That's the only thing I can think of. And that's probably why I've been arrested a couple of times, because they knew with their predictive programming that they, or, you know, that they do with the pre-crime stuff, they knew years ago I was going to find out about their type of feeling. And they were just waiting for a day, actually, today's the day. And I have been hit with EMS, and I, this is another thing all people understand is the TI. I think a lot of times, you're getting physically hit in the augmented reality world. Like, Dr. Cat, I can hear them shooting, I hear them shooting, I hear what they're saying, that they're measuring, them shooting her in the head. They are really shooting her, but they're shooting her in the augmented reality with string theory, and she can just hear it because it's EMF. Wow. It's the string theory that she's dealing with, and she doesn't see it. So that's what she's really got. That's, that's why I really want her to focus on it, because she did that. I think she would blow it open the other half. Like, I can blow open the internet half. She can blow open the other half, and we can stop it. I know we can. At least bring it to light, stop, accept, and start waking people up even better. But we've got to focus on the actual physics and the technology at hand. It's no more, no less intelligent. Yes, it's a, yes, it's, it's mainly DARPA. She can blame DARPA in my, in my view. Okay? D wave computers and DARPA. D wave computers is the quantum computers. And, and started the AI and that we see today. And you know, there's AI all over the Silicon Valley, trust me. I, I drive by Google, Facebook, 
all kinds of places just on my way to work, okay? And I see AI everywhere out here. And what they're data mining is their data. So the net neutrality thing, have you heard about that? Like, you know, they're trying to say net neutrality. So what basically Trump's done is taken all those packets that we call the AI data mining, they're just giving it to corporations to use for retail like too, because they want to predict what you're going to find next, right? So that's the whole thing with net neutrality. So that's it. They are, they are like uh, on both sides of the coin. At all, any any new net or, uh, internet company you see, that's, that's this side of the coin they're showing you. The, the other face of the coin is them data mining your data and then asking for that, that net neutrality to be getting done with it. Right. Don't need that crap. <laughs> right. If if there's if there's technology involved, they've weaponized it, and right. uh, probably <laughs> the 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 internet was probably weaponized as it was being invented. I know um, um, psychotropic and uh, those drugs were invented as weapons. They were, you know, there wasn't. Uh, uh, altruistic scientists working and saying, you yeah, know, I can do this wonderful thing. Didn't happen. Uh, TV was invented to talk to dead people. And now it's just, it's absolutely a propaganda, a propaganda tool. It's never been anything but a propaganda tool. So they're always, it's always weaponized. It's, you know, you, they show you the front side. You know, this is for your entertainment. Smile, but it's always weaponized. Yeah, that's the world right. we live in. So it doesn't... You know, I so on TV since 2016, and I think that was about all the time all this crazy shit's been happening. I was wondering, you know, if that had something to do with it. Like, this all started happening because I got rid of television, maybe? I don't know. It's kind of weird. Oh, I think, I, think there's a, I think there's a lot to that. People that don't have a TV have a tendency to not be entrained or programmed in the TV. So they become dangerous to the uh, controllers, the psychopaths. So uh, that, I, I suppose, not having a TV could get you in the targeting program because you're liable to wake up because they don't, they don't have you for four or five or six or seven hours a day to keep you entrained with, with, with the reality. So, yeah, that could, I think that's, that would label you as dangerous in their eyes to begin with. So do you have any idea about uh, how this how this actually operates now and how I know we were talking about it being inside your head, outside your head. We're talking about holographic reality. We're talking about duplicating our reality. Um, yeah. Yeah. We're. I still think that the Earth is still here, but I think there's a plasma layer on top of it, which has augmented our reality. So you only see what they want you to see. The project will be like tenfold, basically. You know, right. that's it. That's that's what's going on. So us TIs, we won't go into the simulation properly, right? Because I think they're taking people's souls from them and they're throwing them into the simulation, and then they're they're done. They're done. You're done once you go in. Done. What well, tell? You were talking about how chemtrails play into this program before we were so, talking. Chemtrails and heart create the, uh, the ionized atmosphere that's made out of plasma because the material is in there and then it's the electrifying of the heart, right? So that's the plasma, uh, that's the plasma screen, okay? That's the heart screen, that's the way they're able to, whatever is on top of that, who knows? We no longer see the sky. We no longer, even at night. I, right. just, I really don't know what's going on with the moon. I'm starting to think the moon is the off the eye. It's not real. Right. And I'm kidding, you know, because it's so it's strange to me. And I even remember thinking as a child, why is the moon all the way back in the day? I can be here in California and I can see it. I can be in my home state of Texas and I can see it. But I don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my oh, God. I still get up for some of that, okay? I'm just saying. Yeah, there's a lot of questions about that that people should be asking, but that's a different topic. There, so so Harp is creating the plasma screen, and of course they can energize the plasma screen, project whatever is on. Do you think that someone like uh, someone that's gang stalking you, that's appearing to be your mailman, or 
uh, people that are being gang stuff gang stuck often report that they wore a blue dress that day and everybody else had blue on. Right. Do, you, do you think this that's is... Your, that's your mind hallucinating seeing blue. So that, that, that could be their... Right. So when it, and I really think that's why the neural lace is already in place, right? So they just Wi-Fi into your head, okay, you're going to see blue all day, boom, see blue all day. Right? So that's the string theory. That's not so much the physical, that's the augmented. And that's how they're able to augment. So they take, a, they take a white car and they turn it blue. Or they take a, a woman in a green dress and make it blue. Or whatever, right? So that's, and it's a combination, like I told you, I think it's a combination of string theory. It's, it's, and it's just the plasma layer from, from heart is just, and, and the ionosphere is the string. So that's how they're able to, so they modulate different, it's, you need to know, it's very technical, that's why I need help. <laughs> I'm like, you know, I'm like, I need to get the tech part, I need to get the computer, I can get the cyber security stuff, I got that no problem. But when it comes to string theory, I need somebody that's got the experience. <laughs> right. What, uh, tell, tell us a little more about the neural net, how you understand that works. The neural net, uh, Karen? Uh, so, I the neural, I don't know if you mean like, the, not the smart vest, you mean like how... I think uh, yeah, like MRI stuff like that. Like I've that heard it referred to as the astral net. It's it's something that's going to really create the hive mind, because it it might be like a cloud, and all of us are going to be. You know, now the computers right. don't store anything in there; they store everything in the cloud. Maybe what they're going to do is have us so transhumanized that we have to think on the cloud. Maybe that's a neural net. I don't know. I'm sure our commenters are going to fill me in, but uh... yeah, no. I think it was, I think more like a neural lace, like the Elon Musk thing. Okay, so that stuff was planted in its long ago, and once it gets activated, right, then you're neurally linked to the high mind because they're sending signals to and from and remote control in your brain. But they're also what well, people don't understand is they're also migrating us to death. This right, I, I, you probably can't see it, but I have a very small red patch right here on my arm. And I have about four or five on me, and so does my boyfriend. We both are getting these patches because they're trying to kill us, I think. I mean, like, I, I literally I have a rage. I mean, I, 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 I'll take a picture and show it to you, but I'll have to do that. But um, I mean, seriously, like, they are microwaving us. People don't realize if they start seeing little red bumps on their skin targeted individuals, there's a thing called um, uh, microwave radiation sickness they need to look into, okay? This is going to cause anxiety, depression, all those things. And people are suffering from it. And I think the people that they are trying to, we're not going to assimilate into the hive mind, people like me, people like you, they're just going to microwave us to death. And it's going to be a slow pill process. And I don't think it's going to be that slow, maybe a year. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think, between Jared and I, I mean, we get these bumps on it. I'm like, I don't know how much longer we got, buddy. And so that's why I'm trying to get this out, because I really think you're trying to kill me and I off because of what we know. Yeah. We know about the technology industry in Silicon Valley. We, we, we live here. We use your attack. We understand what they're doing. And, you know, these kids today, are so mind controlled already with their phones, they don't even realize that they're building up their own prisons. This is concentration camp central. At the very least, it's concentration camp. The very worst, it's ge genetic, I mean, eugenics. You know, it's yeah. one of the two. But either way, you're building your own death, essentially. Right. Whether it's the death of your soul and your hive mind, or it's the death of your body and your soul because you won't assimilate. So. This is what people are doing out here in Silicon Valley with themselves. We don't even notice. That's the scary part. Wow. Yeah, people don't notice. They're not waking up. They're not waking up fast enough to this. But I think you're connecting some dots here. Is very interesting. How this is all working and the simulated reality. These entities manifesting through fiber optic optics predicted in the pro the. The project Bluebeam um, uh, project. I, by the way, if you haven't looked at, I'm sure everybody that listens to the World Beyond Belief because we've done podcasts on uh, 
on Project Bluebeam and uh, how it's, it seems to be rolling out. By the time we did the uh, podcast, the first podcast, all the, uh, uh, the technical uh, apparatus was almost in place. Now, with this ability to manifest different realities coming in through either the, either the uh, cybernet or directly probably into chips or something in your head, uh, that's, that's how they're, they're doing it and that's how they're controlling these people and that's how they're going to control everybody that doesn't exactly, that doesn't watch enough TV. If you don't watch enough yeah. TV, yeah. here's how we're going to control you. And uh, it's going to be scary Literally, because... You're going to around and go watch TV because you need to get in line. Right. You can't get in line. We have another plan for you. you That's know? right. That's right. And the technical, uh, Technic Crime Fighters Forum, we did a uh, thing the other, the other week about how to protect yourself from the burning of those things. Uh, it's on my... It's on uh, Pinecone Utopia channel. It's uh, Karen Melton Stewart did a thing on different things you can buy at Home Depot and uh, different ways you can get them cheaper to protect yourself from these various instruments. Uh, Karen Horton, uh, Catherine Horton always does it too. She'll she'll mention a few things, and always in the comments under these tech, the, there'll be other people chiming in. I use this, and so uh, you know we're not sitting around like Schlemiel's just taking it. We're actually uh, trying to protect well, ourselves. I remember I worked for electrical contractors. Galvanized steel only is probably the best thing, right? Everyone's who's got galvanized steel, that's hard to get come by. But even the copper, I think it is, oh, um, there's another one with aluminum. It's like, a, but it's got aluminum and it, and it, and it has like a insulation over it, right? So that protects really good for being that. There's only really two things out there that do that. So a lot of people don't realize that. Is that galvanized aluminum foil is not going to do much for you at all, and nothing actually. You need galvanized steel, okay, or you need insulated aluminum because insulated aluminum is actually just blocking because it's actually insulation, right? So you need to show it that way. And that's how they're able to keep the MF in. A lot of people don't get to understand that part. So a lot of the shielding technique, I truly, just because I can read, I read the electrical codes about it and it's, it's not what people think. So I mean, there's really no way to show about it either because there are microwave towers every, what, 150 yards? You know, and, and, and total combat like, are really everywhere. Even if you go to the stop like it's little white boxes on there, and that's what that is, is it's part of the microwave. It's, it's part of the project movie. They need to fake this reality because whatever they've got going up on space, what people need to realize is let's look at, let's think about Antarctica. What's going on in Antarctica? All this weird stuff, my, the ice sheet falling off, yeah. I mean, you know, the Nazis were down there, every now Harry, Buzz, all whoever else is going down there. There's something going down, down, down there. <laughs> right. Okay, there's something going on down there, and there's definitely something going on above us in the sky when the Air Force announces Space Command. Okay? Like, hello? Space Command, seriously. I mean, there's something going on above us they don't want us to see, is my personal opinion. Oh, I think so too. Yeah, I think there's something up there that. Uh, they don't want us to know about the same as in Antarctica. I think there's things down there that they can't afford to have us know about. Now, since we're we have the internet and we have the ability to travel everywhere, you know, they have to keep us physically out of this out of this information. They have to keep us Which physically. Which is why they created semantic web, so they could look at the web and see what was really going on and keep us siloed by AI monitoring our internet routers. Right. That's why they did it. So they can feed you what AI thinks you want to see, and they can hide from you what's really going on in the world, like in Syria or Russia. You know, I don't really believe the Russians hacked that election. The CIA had plenty of tools to do with their damn self. Right. Vault 7. And that is something that I'm going to be looking into with Vault 7, because I think a lot of what I have here, the information, I even think the stuff with the 5G network, we would be able to find online looking at Vault 7. We 
people need to maybe look at what he did so it falls out a little closer. Regardless of what you think about Julian Assange, that information is incredibly valuable to Americans especially. Oh, yeah. I, oh, I think Vault 7 uh, released a lot of stuff. I think what's going on down in the Arctic is very important. What they're doing with HARP now, since they privatized HARP, and uh, who, who the NGOs or who, you know, they privatized it to keep away, to avoid uh, government responsibility now. So they can do whatever they want to with it. And now we've got 5G coming in, and now we've got smart meters coming in, and uh, it's kind of building up all around us. And uh, well, one thing I'd like to say to everybody listening is, if you go to my blog, it's cyber reconnaissance. You can just I, my handle is cyber reconnaissance on on Twitter. It's my actual handle is at Jack Cares, and um, I'll give you the links right so that you can put them on. We'll put them below. You know, one of the things I try to show people is. To wake your friends and family up, what's really going on, you know, assuming you're still real people, you know, yeah. um, is to take your iPhone. I do, I have a, it's a tutorial on how to take your iPhone and how to show, I can, how I can show you that you actually have what's called a private network, taking yours, that can control all your appliances, and basically it's using the air, this airport utility app that everybody has on their phone, their iPhone, this is one right here. So if you go to my, my blog, I have information about how you can search, see your I, I, your neighbor's router, your router, see all the devices attached to your router, see if you have another router that is mimicking yours, which is really easy to do. What they do is you have a MAC address and they just change one of the numbers in the front, back, wherever. One number of digital will be off. And then you can see if you're being monitored, and you know, the people that are well woken, I think, are being monitored even closely. So those are the ones that are going to have a private network. But maybe people that don't realize they're being targeted, they, they do look at that you know, tutorial and be able to see whether they are or not. Because I guarantee you, if you're running a private network on yours and you notice your neighbor's not, then maybe there's something you need to look at. And you need to go to your ISP provider, your ATT contact, whoever has your internet. You know, license to get part of them or whatever for the ad address and say, why am I running a private network? I bought this router from you and you're supposed to have my iPhone and my iPad on there. And I have this other router with almost the same number and it's got all these other things on it. I didn't agree that what is it? You know, I mean, start bringing it to people's attention. It's very least you do. You know, I don't think they care. I think they'll tell you what you're really talking about, you know, but. Yeah. That's how it's going to be. Corporations are behind. So, but there might be some good people in there. There might be, might be people in there to help wake somebody else up in the, in the industry, maybe. You know, get another whistleblow out there. Could, a, else. could a target individual who knows that his neighbors or her neighbors are targeting them, could they go through it and see what the neighbor's looking at? Uh, find out what the neighbor. Would that be yeah. useful for that? No, they couldn't do that. I mean, what it is is basically all you see is what devices you can connect to, your router's connected to, or your neighbor's router's connected to. So you can go look at their, their devices, but you actually need to hack into the router to do what you're talking about. Okay, yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> right. many ways that. You'd have to know how anyway. So, but I think this is like a, learning about this is a good way to defeat it. Because knowledge is power, and that's the reason why I keep learning is because I know in here is the answer if I keep researching how to stop it. And I'm talking about an attack vector off from the net side and attacking the AI, you know. And I know these things. I know somebody who works at a cybersecurity company basically that says they, their AI is doing exactly the things that I would like to do to AI. <laughs> it's defeating that, right? So there's got to be a different angle to hit at, which is why I would really like to talk to a physicist that would be able to say, on a quantum computer side, can I hit it? You know, <laughs> can I hack it from the right. top or whatever? So. Well, if there's somebody like that in the, if there's, let me get my, if there's somebody like that in the TI community, we get a lot of, uh, view views and they'll comment and they could get in touch with you and they could augment what you know i mean there's there's that would be great. 
Yeah, I'm hoping I'm hoping that that happens. Hey, yeah. you know, I think a lot of times when you throw things out and you connect dots, that may or may not be real. And you talk to people that uh, might have a different uh, different opinion of how this whole thing uh, fits together. We got a little bit of a confusion here. We've got uh, we're uh, we're going out and seeing what's going on. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, very. This is a this is an exciting place to live. Anyway, I think that all these ideas. I think the that my own personal thing is. I think that the right brain of the human of the human being is different than, than any other thing, any other computer. And the more we can use the right brain and be cre creative and connect dots, the better off we're going to be. Um, and so I, I like your approach, putting everything you know together. <laughs> this is wild. We have eight dogs. And uh, when they, it's a household. We did, they just came to us. And uh, they, they enjoy us, we enjoy them, and they're great protection. But they, they're a little noisy when you're trying to do something on the internet. So, uh, do you want to leave us with something really, uh, what we should be doing with this information while I can turn my microphone off and people can hear you other than just barking? How about that? Yeah, so I recommend that people start looking into the world, the, the sentient world simulation. You can just Google about it and you can find information on it. Even though it may not be everything that's out there because if our routers are compromised the way I think they are, well, whatever, you know, but you can find information. If you start looking into that, you might open up some other doors for you that you're not thinking about as far as targeting concerned or as far as waking your family that's concerned. Look at my blog post. Learn to use the utility app of iPhone to wake people up and show them the private networks are running. Go to your go to your ISP and say, I'm not going to take this anymore. I want this thing gone and I want your tech here to fix it. This is what I pay you for. You know, I mean these are things that people can do to start moving the system in a positive direction. That you're not going to get anywhere with Congress, you're not going to get anywhere with over I mean it helps, you know, if you want to work to be great, but you need to have actual things that you can prove that they are corruption on. Then having private networks on your router, that's pure corrupt corporate corruption. Because that's basically the data link layer being left wide open for whomever, any hacker. So do something about that corporation. People will start waking up if we keep doing things like that. So I, that, I leave you with that, and I, I leave everybody with looking into quantum computers and understanding a little bit about maybe what augmented reality really is, you know? These are fields that are emerging that we, you know, I'm 38 years old, and I had no idea what this shit was. I had no idea. I had none. And now I'm like, because I knew about tech stuff, I was able to figure all this out. And linking everything is just... Let your mind go. Look at the sentient world simulation and let your mind go from there. And take a risk. I did. And it, and it made me understand a lot. Well, that's great. And, and I'm going to trust that you're going to continue to go down this rabbit hole and keep us informed as to what you come up with uh, so that we can talk later when you say, oh, Paul, wait a minute. I've also discovered that this is how they're doing this. And this is because I would love to hear it. And I'm sure the World View on Belief audience would, would like to hear it, too. Well, I'm going to try and take back internet router to that link layer first. And then I'm going to work on some other stuff as far as finding attack vectors. Because that's what they're doing. They're just trying to find attack vectors for getting rid of this crap. But I need help. I need help, and that's why I'm reaching out to you, to your audience, because I know there's people that are, you know, have physics degrees that under that are being targeted or what have you, and I know that there's tech people out there that are smarter than me. I'm sure. Oh. <laughs> right. so I'm like, I know the people are out there and they're being targeted. Let's stop the targeting. Get with me. Let's get moving on an action plan and get some, you know, 
find ways to fight this. There is ways. We are smart enough to figure this out. If I can figure this out, you guys can help me figure the rest of the way. Right. I think you're not targeted for nothing. I think you can, I think when you represent a, a threat to them, uh, even if it's just your intelligence, or even if it's just you have a searching mind, or, you know, you have two or three different pieces of the puzzle put together, they become very dangerous. So, yeah, they can't have you running around uh, being un, unscathed by this program. So, uh, I don't know, I think that uh, we do have a lot of uh, TIs that are really into it, and a lot of them think of nothing else than how are we going to stop this and how we're going to get through it. And I think that represents a formidable opponent to whoever, whatever, whatever, is doing this right. madness, right? I have no idea who it really is. You know, you want to blame DARPA. You know, those guys, a lot of them think they're doing a good job, you know, and I'm not saying that, you know, there's nobody there that's guilty, but whoever that person is, it's not who we think they are. You know, it's, you're never going to know, you know, who won't. But that's okay, because we can't fight it. We can still fight when. I know yeah. we can, I think we need to have faith. That's right. Of this life, the, That's right. The targeting. The, and the longer you press persevere, the more reward you'll get in the end. You yeah. Don't have to see that. You will see that. I think don't that's great. So, thank you very much, Karen. This has been uh, as thrilling as it was this afternoon when you when you first laid this stuff on me. I'm hoping that the people that are into quantum computers and can see this whole thing put it together and give us the next piece that you can that can throw back to you and then you can take it further and further and we can understand how this is happening. Thank you very much for spending part of your day with us. It's been real and uh, I really uh, I really enjoyed our conversation. I'm sure the people listening did too. Thank you, Karen Rodriguez. Thank you.